Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about health anxiety today and navigating the fear that comes up around that and finding calm, that calm that is deep within you. We all have it. And I know you can find it. If I could find it, you can find it too. And today is a listener question and answer. So just a quick reminder that if you have a question, you can send it to me either by email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com, or you can send it by going to the website and on the contact page, I believe you can fill out your question in there and send it to us that way. Please don't hesitate to send in your question. Often I lump a lot of them together and just answer it as a episode, but I thought it might be nice to actually answer these directly. So let's do it again today with a listener question and answer. And The question that came in through the email says, Hi, Gina. I really need your help in overcoming anxiety. I'm scared whenever my heart beats. I'm scared whenever I have a headache because my mind races to so many things and it leaves me in a panic state. Sometimes I get scared of checking my blood pressure because I wouldn't want to know what the result says. It's been seven months since this whole panic attack started, and I really want to overcome this. Thank you so much to our listener for sending it in. And she had a couple of emojis here at the end with the crying face and the prayer hands. And we are here. We are here to help. Thank you for sending it in. So I want to talk about the common issue first of the heart. First off, our heart beats in so many different ways. There are the skipped beats, the heavy beats, the thumping or the pounding, and all of that can send the mind off to a thousand different horrible thoughts. We can immediately think that we are in distress at the least and having a major heart attack at the other end of things. It really can drive us down the wormhole. If you have been kind of on the edge of things to begin with, and then you get some of these heart palpitations, the skip beats, heavy beats, whatever, it might just be enough to push you over. That's why we want to try to keep ourselves on even keel and not be in a chronically stressed state. Because then anything that comes up, it makes us feel like we are in a horrible place. This is the end. And then what do we do often? We Google. And I want to caution you about doing that because the Google will tell you all of the possible horrible things that could happen. And there's nothing wrong with having that kind of information available. Somebody may need to know those things. But if you are chronically stressed and are experiencing anxiety and panic, the last thing you need to do is to fill your mind with more of the catastrophic things that could happen or could be happening. Because often that's not the case. So what are we going to do? We immediately think that we're in distress and, like I said, think we're having a heart attack or at the very least that we're just very uncomfortable. And I have to tell you that I used to think that any feeling in my chest area that I was having a heart attack. And that was in my early 20s. Early 20s, that's what I thought. I mean, it could have been a gas bubble. It could have just been chest 
tightness from the way I was always clenching down and feeling so tight, of course, I'm going to feel a sensation around there. I'm holding all my stress there. But oh no, in my mind, I was having a heart attack at that ripe young age. And I was completely in fear. And I was adding so much more stress and fear to the situation that my chest would become tighter again. And I would feel even worse. So it's important to understand how our heart works because information can be really helpful. You don't have to be medically understanding all of this, just knowing that there are some things that could be causing your heart to beat in a different way and maybe not have to be panicked about it, thinking like I did, that you are having a heart attack. So if we can understand that the heart does not always beat the same way, and that's normal, and there are many things that can affect its rhythm and its volume. So I just want to lay out a couple of these in case you might not be thinking, oh my gosh, well, that could be making my heart beat differently. Maybe it's not even my stress. Maybe it's not my anxiety. Maybe it's some of the things like the following. Medications, many, many, many medications will cause a change in the heart rhythm or volume. So maybe it's your medication. Think about whether you just took a medication. Have you changed a medication? Is there something different going on? Different combinations, taking them at a different time. Just check into that. Another one would be alcohol. We don't think about that. We think about alcohol is kind of going to make us chill out and relax, but alcohol can definitely cause some changes in the heart rhythm. So can your diet. This one's going to surprise people. And I don't mean whether you're doing a keto diet or a paleo diet or whatever, whatever type of diet, your actual food intake, the diet that you eat could be related to some different heartbeats or rhythms. And what can usually do that are things that you might be sensitive to or allergic to, because then you might be having like a histamine reaction and you're having inflammation and that can definitely cause a change in your heart rhythm. So think about that. Do you always get a fluttery heart after you've eaten chocolate? Or maybe it's a particular spice. I actually have a number of these things. I really just don't eat them anymore if they cause me to have an inflammatory response. And that way I don't have to be concerned about, you know, anything that's happening in my heart area. But it could be something like that. It could also be your fitness level. Let's be honest. How fit are we? Do we need to get our heart working a little bit more? Do we need to exercise it? It's such a huge muscle. Of course, it's going to need to be toned and to stay in shape. But often we're not doing enough fitness-wise to get to that place. So consider that. Smoking, of course, you probably don't need me to remind you of that, but if you're a smoker, you may want to consider that. The smoking itself may be causing you things that are triggering you to feel anxious. You know, your body temperature also can cause your heart rate to change. So maybe if you are coming down with something and your temperature is rising, that could be part of the issue. So could very simply your position, your sitting, lying down, or standing up, or going to stand up from lying down can really cause differences in how the heart is reacting and beating. So if you have issues with that, 
make note of it and make note of it to tell your healthcare practitioner next time you talk to them, because maybe there are some things that need to change in your healthcare regime. Maybe if you're on medications or anything like that, that could help with that. Emotions, of course, can make our heart beat differently. We all know that. Beating heart when we are calm and in our meditation, really feeling a peace, a little smile on our face, maybe we have a smile in our heart, is very different than if we are angry, we are upset, we are feeling out of control, then our heart and our emotions are coming together in a different way. I want you to pay attention to that. Do you notice that you get a flutter when you're feeling sad or when you're feeling angry? Just put these things together. You know what I'm going to say next. A journal is a great place to take note of those things. Now, there's another one. Dehydration. Big one for how your heart beats. We want to make sure that we stay hydrated, making sure that we have enough fluid in our day and enough electrolytes, meaning that we normally can get those from a lot of our food. But if you're somebody who sweats a lot or lives in a hot climate and loses a lot of fluid through your skin throughout the day, you may need extra electrolytes in some of your water. Just check into it. And last but not least, drugs. There can be drugs. I mentioned medications earlier, but by drugs, there are things that you are taking on your own. Maybe not a medication from a physician, but either over-the-counter drugs or street drugs. Please pay attention. All of this takes a big impact on our whole body, and that includes our heart rate. So you don't have to immediately be afraid of it. Just knowing what it might be coming from can be information that is power for you. Our mind doesn't consider these factors easily. The anxious mind goes right to the worst case scenario. So it's our job to get some space. Take a pause. Breathe. Take a step back. And assess the reality of the situation. We can't do a reality check if we are spinning out in panic. And that's why we have to learn to stop or pause, then breathe and take that longer and slower exhalation and get into the present moment versus imagining ourselves in the hospital with a major heart attack like I used to do back in the day. I was sure that was what was happening to me. Well, I'm many, 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 many decades older, have the same heart. It still does some of the same flutters. It bounces around. I have all kinds of little blips and blops that it's done for my entire life. It's okay. I'm still here. They've never found anything big with my heart. Now, the headache is the same thing. You can have a headache for a multitude of reasons. And of course, it's important for you to have your healthcare team know of your concerns. So be sure to speak your concerns to them. We can have a headache from tension. I know you guys probably know that kind of feeling. We can have migraines. So I want to ask our listener, do you suffer from migraines? It could be from sinus congestion. And then it could be from allergies. It could be from eye strain. Maybe your eyes need to be checked. And maybe if you use contacts or glasses, you need to have an adjustment made. And not always more powerful because often our eyes get better and we need less power in our contacts or our eyeglasses. So maybe you need to have that checked. Again, dehydration can also cause those headaches as can caffeine. Whether you've missed your cup of morning joe or you have been trying to get off it and you are in the withdrawal process, that can give you a headache like you've never experienced before. I have given up caffeine a number of times in my life and more than once I didn't 
titrate down, I completely went cold turkey. And that headache is a killer. It really, really does hurt. And if you didn't know why you had that headache, you would actually think something was devastatingly wrong with you. So it's good for us to take that pause first and check in. What's changed with me? What am I doing differently? What could this possibly be from? And again, the headache could be from medications, just like we were talking about with the heart. It could be from hormonal changes. And I don't think I mentioned that in the heart, but boy, hormonal changes can really affect your heart rate too. So sorry, I missed that one, but we caught it here. Now, the headache could also be from weather changes. The way that the barometric pressure is, maybe there's storm coming in. It could be the weather. But our anxious mind will not even consider any of these things. It just goes to the worst case scenario, causing more stress, strain, and ill ease feelings. So I want to talk about the blood pressure taking that our listener wrote in about. Now, I totally hear you. Thank you for bringing it up because I'm not even anxious as things go regularly. But when I broke my wrist, last year, and I had a really high blood pressure reading in the hospital, I got concerned. But I got concerned because the medical people got concerned. Because my doctor, I would go, whatever, he would would talk about it. He was not one that was easily flustered. So to see these people like going, oh my gosh, better check it again. And I was like, oh my goodness, what are they talking about? So I totally get you of not wanting to see what the blood pressure reading is, because it can be frightening. It can be brought to us in a frightening way. So I get you. And I think it's very interesting to have this happen and to even feel the stress level rise for a number of times when I would take my blood pressure, I would be like, oh no, what if I'm going to have a high reading when I would take it at home? And what if it gets high and I would have to go through, well, it would be higher than normal because I was freaking myself out. Even me, if you're already anxious, it was probably even higher So my suggestion there is to stay away from it for a little while, unless your doctor has told you that you have to take it every so many days or every day, whatever. And if they've told you that, maybe you can have a conversation with them and see if there's something else that you can do. Because staying away from it for a little while, and I just let it sit on my desk for a few days, then I eventually took it. And if it was higher than usual, I just took it a second time after chilling out for 10 minutes. I intentionally got calm and centered with breathing longer and slower exhalations, and it came down in those 10 minutes. And eventually I got enough space away from where they frightened me about it, and I don't even need to take a second reading now because the first one now when I take it is pretty much back to normal. This is how powerful our mind is. My mind and its fear of the high reading made me more stressed and therefore a higher reading until I took the reins and intentionally got calm. And then over time, I had no angst seeing the cuff or taking a reading, so it would be a normal reading. Now remember, the same mind that can take you in your imagination to the worst case thoughts like the hospital causing a spike in your stress hormones, this very same mind can calm you down. Bring to mind thoughts of gratitude, being okay and being cared for, even if by yourself. Your mind is powerful and if put to good use, it can heal you instead of stressing you and hurting you. It's not an easy fix, especially at first. And you may say, oh, this can't help. I can't think anything but the scary ruminating thoughts I have when I'm having a weird heartbeat, headache, or looking at the blood pressure reading. But the reality is you can make a difference. It takes being reminded over and over again and being willing to take that pause, 
breathe, reality check, present moment conditions. That's where you're going with your reality check. What's happening right now to give yourself the space to make a different choice in where your mind can go. We can teach the mind to behave differently, just like we can break a wild horse to take us where we want to go versus it running wild where it wants to go. Don't give up. Just as the fear, anxiety, fear cycle can keep spinning if we add fuel to it, so can a pause, breathe, reality check, meaning getting back to present moment conditions, begin to reduce the flow of hormones, the adrenaline and cortisol that are released when we're in fight or flight and bring us back to a place of more peace and calm over time. Train your mind. It takes time, practice, and patience, but it's absolutely worth it. Thank you so much for sending your question in. And I hope that if you out there listening have a question you'd like me to answer, you'll send it in. And now for today's quote. Courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence of fear. And that's from Mark Twain. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.